Yummy, yummy. <laughs> Back in the day, my family was poor. Money was hard for us. You gonna like this banana pudding right here, I'm telling you. I was a kid that was looking for love. You know, I just felt unloved. A lot of my decision making was because of that. Why you putting them broke cookies on there, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I got pregnant with my first son when I was 14 years old. I felt like having children would, they would love me. <laughs> I used to go jogging at night. It was just a way for me to just release what was going on at the time. I left my son in the bed and then I jogged to the end of the street. When I jogged back home, I went in this room. I noticed he wasn't breathing. I just grabbed him and ran. I was screaming, trying to get somebody. I was trying to get him to breathe, and I didn't know what to do. The detectives were there, and they said, we need to take you back down for questioning. Before I could even sit down in the room, they started yelling, screaming, getting in my face. I told them I didn't kill my son. I tried to save him. I didn't have my mom there. didn't have anybody advising me on what to say. I didn't know what my rights were. Sabrina Butler took the witness stand for the first time yesterday since her trial began, claiming to the very end that she did not kill her nine-month-old son. This was my son, my flesh and brother. And they accused me of killing my son. And that was hard. Took the jury one hour to come back with the verdict. When I stood before that judge and he said to me, uh, we sentence you to die by lethal injection and may God have mercy on your soul. I could remember saying to him, no, may God have mercy on your soul. I got sentenced March the 13th of 1990. My death date was July the 2nd of 1990. When my death date came, I thought that they actually was coming to take me to my death. That is an overwhelming feeling of fear because I thought they were gonna come to my cell with the preacher and, you know, the security guards or whatever it was. And, put these chains and stuff on me and then, you know, carry me down the hallway to, to my death. Oh gosh, that's hard. For like three years, I was just you know, I don't care, you know, I'm gonna die anyway. But then I got to the point to say, you can't, you can't get away with this. I got tired of people calling me baby killer. It wasn't just me, they were crucifying in the news, they were crucifying my family. And I knew I had to figure out how to fix it. I started writing everybody I could think about, trying to prove my innocence. And then when I got two more attorneys, you know, they were God sent. When my attorneys went to the hospital, they found out my son's medical records were there the entire time. It showed that my son had heart problems, kidney problems, and chronic bowel syndrome. It was nothing, nothing that I did to cause his death. Even if I didn't go out for a run, the same thing was gonna happen. And when that judge said, we find you not guilty, boy, my legs just went like spaghetti noodles. And I, and I failed because I, you know, I knew it was coming, but I just, it's just like a rush of whatever. You know what I mean? I was so happy that it was finally over. After all those, those years, man, I was happy. I was so happy. I finally could say that the world see now that I didn't kill my son, and that I finally proved it.
This is no water. He was a very good baby and very quiet. I didn't get to grieve my son, and I just want it to be known that he was a very lovely boy. I wanted to know that we all loved him. My daughter was born with the same kidney disease that my son that died had. And that was devastating to me, you know, and I'm saying to myself, not again, not like this. I am very protective of my children, and I think sometimes a little more than I should be. Things can happen and you can end up in places that you never thought could happen to you, like what happened to me. So, you know, y'all just have to watch your back out here. She's an awesome mom. She's not necessarily just my mom, she's my friend. Your hair smells so good. What? It does. <laughs> <laughs> She's been through enough. I want to try to be the best daughter that I can. I love her. You think that it's all over with, but when you get out and you try to go back into society, that's totally different. What happened to my mom can happen to anyone, and it can happen at any moment. Anytime, anywhere, it can happen. We don't need prosecutors to have complete immunity. I don't think one man should have that much power. That's not right. We're not God. We're playing God here. And that's, that's just not right.